Well, <clears throat> good morning. <laughs> good morning live from, uh, and welcome to Peace Through the Word this morning, uh, a ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson, Arizona, uh, in the United States of America. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm coming to you from a completely different place. Coming to you from our uh, uh, kind of our motel room in Roosevelt, Arizona. It's uh, right on, uh, real close to beautiful Roosevelt Lake uh, in um, in beautiful uh, Arizona, in the United States of America. Roosevelt Lake is a lake that was made uh, from the construction of the Rose. And this dam was named after President Theodore Roosevelt. He came here and he, uh, uh, you know, opened the dam and uh, uh, registered it, I guess that's what you say. And um, so it's a very beautiful lake. You can boat on it. You can fish. Uh, I talked with a gentleman this morning next door. He's got a beautiful and he's going out on the lake this morning. But uh, coming to you a little early, you know, I'm dressed, I've got my jacket on, and uh, we have to leave, and uh, we're on our way to Lakeside, Arizona, up in the beautiful White Mountains of northeastern Arizona for some time of a uh, little bit of uh, vacation, a little bit of rest and relaxation. It's been, 2020's been quite a year <laughs> for us, and we've had a lot of things that have occurred in our lives, a lot of uh, uh, various challenges of, of which we've all experienced. So uh, we're going to take a few days just to kind of recharge the batteries, but I'm still going to be bringing peace through the word to you, uh, but we'll be coming to you <laughs> as we travel. So this morning we're in Roosevelt Lake at Roosevelt Lake Resort, but we've got to leave here rather shortly because the restaurant uh, is not open on Monday morning. So uh, I'm not sure I quite understand that, but it is what it is. So we're going to travel on up to beautiful Payson uh, for breakfast at the airport. Uh, that's a beautiful uh, airport. It's a beautiful restaurant, and it satisfies both uh, as well as my passion for flying, and it's on the way to uh, the White Mountains. So that's why... That's why, you know, we're, we're, we're dressed and getting ready to go. But uh, this morning, we're going to be looking at, uh, the title of our devotion is called Copycat, but uh, it's, the, uh, it's the encounter that Ruth had with her mother-in-law, Naomi. And I pray that that's going to bless you and give you real peace this morning. And uh, so what a blessing it is to to bring you peace through the word from Roosevelt, Arizona this morning. So we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the now and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. So, brothers and sisters, this morning I'd like to share with you uh, a, the first reading, a psalm. It's Psalm 103, and uh, I pray that it's going to bless you this morning, wherever you may be, uh, chiming in globally. And my daughter is watching. 
and uh, our vice president, Mary Brandt, is watching. So I need to behave. I've got the officers of the church checking in. So, but I love it. I, we we got a tremendous ministry group at Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, and it's such a privilege and honor to serve uh, in ministry alongside of them and with them. Our, our vice president, God bless you. So good to see you this morning. And my daughter, Brianna, good to see you, my dear. And, you know, I just the, uh, discovered yesterday, asked, uh, when we got here, uh, we had a beautiful trip driving up, just beautiful scenery. And for those of you that are living here in Arizona, if you've never been here to the Tonto uh, National Monument, you really you really owe it to yourself to to take some time and come on up and and take a look at Roosevelt Lake, take a look at this place. It's gorgeous. But uh, yesterday when we got here, I, I I told my wife, I said, you know, we're ministering all over the world. And I said, I've got another brother pastor that chimed in from us from Chile. And I met him while I was in the Dominican. And, and so he chimes in. So we got Chile, we've got uh, Peru, we've got uh, Dominican Republic, we've got Honduras, we've got Spain, we've got Malaysia, uh, we've got Cuba, uh, you know. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. So God is doing some incredible things, amen. So what a blessing. Well, uh, let me share with you Psalm 103. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. <laughs> Boy, that's pretty good. Good. Those benefits. You know, sometimes if you're like me, sometimes, you know, you're... You're rushing around, and and if you're like me, you're you're really, uh, you know, concentrating on, you know, got to get this, got to get that, and what have you. And so sometimes we, we fail to acknowledge the the benefits that God gives us. So you know that's good. That's a good reminder. Forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? You know, I'm living proof of that. You know, I saw my uh, cardiologist on Friday and he said, man, you really dodged a, dodged a big bullet. So, you know, God heals all our diseases. He really does. So who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Man, that's really good. You know, and, and, and last night here right by our room, we've got a bunch of goose, geese, you know, we got wings too, and then we got ducks. <laughs> but last night we heard the geese <laughs> right out our door. <laughs> so, but anyway, God bless him, man. <laughs> so anyway, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. People, you need to, you need, you need to grasp that. The Lord is merciful and graceful. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. As the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions. I ask you, where does the east stop and the west begins? Nobody knows. So that's how far God has removed our sins from us. So, you know, seriously, we need to claim it. And, and that ought to put smiles on our faces. You know, you are totally washed clean, clean. And he chooses to forget them. We don't. We resurrect our sins and everything else. And, oh, brother, you know, but he chooses to forget them. So if he chooses to forget them, why do we continue to want to resurrect them? I've never quite figured that out. <laughs> so anyway, let, let, let's just let go of them as he does, okay? As, as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field. 
for the wind passes over it and it is gone and its place knows no more. You know, and, and I, I'm reminded of that again. You know, yesterday I got word that a person we've been praying for has gone to be with the Lord. And uh, while it is uh, sad in another, you know, the parting of a loved one, it, it, it hurts, you know. But we have the blessed hope of the resurrection, and that's what keeps us keeping on. Amen. So what a blessing that is. Um, For those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. <clears throat> Bless the Lord, O you, his angels, <clears throat> you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. A very beautiful psalm. I pray that has blessed you. Well, I want to share with you a passage of Scripture. This is what our devotional is going to unpack. It's from the book of Ruth. You know, I like the book of Ruth for a number of reasons. It's a, it's a story about uh, love, but it's also a story about a lady who had the same name as my mom. Ruth. <laughs> so I kind of, Ruth <clears throat> was an incredible person. And uh, so there's a lot of things we can learn from her. So I'm going to just share with you, uh, I think, chapter one, as we begin our time together this morning. Uh, it's really eight, 18 verses. I pray it's going to bless your heart. So in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. In Israel, a famine. We got famine here in the United States. The United States is following the exact same uh, road as ancient Israel, no difference. So what you see happening to ancient Israel, you'll also see mimicking in the United States of God. All right, so here we go. Um, and a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Mahalan and Chilon. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. Bethlehem. Do we know anything that happened in Bethlehem? <laughs> it's where Jesus is in the city of David in Judah. So here we have um, these Ephrathites Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died. He died. So Naomi was left as a widow. Okay? And she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth. All right. These were Moabites. Israel was forbidden to have any kind of relations with Moabites. Forbidden. Yet here's two sons and they married Moabite women. That's a that's a no-no. So that's a sin. All right? That's a huge sin. But watch how God works out grace and through the sinful act of two sons. So um, they lived there about 10 years. And both Mahalan and Shalom died. So both these sons who took Moabite women died. All right? So that the women was left without her two sons and her husband. So now Naomi not only is a widow herself, but she's got two who have now lost their husbands who were her two sons. So now she's lost her two sons as well. So notice how the judgments of God fall. In death, in separation, in sadness, and sorrow, and all these other components. Okay? But he's working out his salvation and his redemption. There's a bigger agenda. 
Okay. So then she arose with her daughters-in-law, this is Naomi, to return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So that apparently there was food because of the famine. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi, my, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and the Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husband? Then turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Um, would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly better to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out again. Now notice how Naomi's faith has, has wavered. She says, I notice that the Lord's hand has gone against me. The Lord's hand never goes against his children, never. But she became indwelt with grief and sorrow and the journeys of life. And so her faith wavered. Sometimes that happens. We take our focus off Jesus and we put it on the things and stuff. And so our, way, our faith can waver. So did Naomi's. All right. So, <clears throat> so then she goes, uh, I think I lost my place here. Uh, they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Ophrah kissed her mother-in-law and Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. See, the Moabites had many gods, just like the United States. All right? Um... So it says, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So Ruth didn't go back, but decided to stay with Naomi. All right, so let's see how our, dev how our devotional unpacks this for us this morning. It says, for most of us, the term copycat does not conjure up good memories from childhood. <laughs> you know the game. One child mimics another until the child being copied gets annoyed and yells copycat, you know. Ruth insisted that she go with Naomi back to Naomi's homeland of Judah. She wanted Naomi's people to be her people. Was Naomi famous? No, but she had a God who was famous. Ruth saw a reflection of God in Naomi's actions and character. That's important. People need to see that in our lives today. A reflection of God in everything that we think, say, and do. You know, that's our mission. <laughs> but Naomi herself seems to have forgotten God's steadfast love for her. She even stated that the Lord's hand had gone out against her. Naomi impacted Ruth in such a way that Ruth devoted herself to Naomi and to Naomi's God. Through God's perfect plan, Ruth became a descendant of David and of Jesus the Savior. See the big agenda that was being worked out? 
See, we don't see the, gen the, the, the things that God is working out sometimes. This Savior not only saved Naomi and Ruth from their sins and granted them eternal life, but this Savior also provides these same gifts for each copycat believer from generation to generation. It's good stuff, amen? Yeah, it is. Let me pray this prayer. Dear Lord, may each one of us be a reflection of your love, that others may copy our faith and be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a blessing. What a responsibility we have as followers and disciples. Of the Amen. So the Lord have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. He's redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight. For you, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of the salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, this morning, let's pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and keep us. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, so good to have you uh, from Roosevelt, Arizona, near Roosevelt Lake. And so I convey to you all of God's blessings today. Go out and enjoy the day. Have fun and uh, the blessings of our Lord be with you in abundance as we travel on to Pace and then on over to Sholo and Lakeside. So uh, we'll be coming to you, hopefully, Lord willing, tomorrow from our cabin in Lakeside, Arizona. So until then, wheels up, flaps retracted, blue skies.